The UIM F1H20 World Championship returned to Evian, France for the second year in a row as the 20th French Grand Prix was raced on Lac Le Mans. A world famous and historic spa resort located at the foot of the French Alps, Evian has an intimate connection with water and it gives its name to the most famous brand of mineral water in the world. This is a luxury destination that attracts visitors from all around the globe with its beautiful town center, its five-star hotels and spas, and panoramic lake views, making it one of the gems of Europe and a tourism haven. A top destination during the Belle Epoque and the Roaring Twenties, Evian is known for its stunning architectural works, including the Clock Tower, and of course, the La Grande Jolac Concert Hall, which is made completely of wood. And then of course, there's the Casino d'Evian, the largest theme casino in Europe. But Evian's greatest beauties lie in the lush green countryside where idyllic pastoral scenes greet visitors and where some of France's greatest cheeses and dairy products are produced. This high-end international jet-set destination hosts round two of the 2016 F1 H2O World Championship once again, the event would attract extensive interest and coverage in France as tens of thousands gathered to watch the best powerboat racers on earth battle it out for the coveted French Grand Prix title, including French hero and two-time defending world champion Philippe Chiat. Teams also made sure to pay their respects and commemorate the victims of the terrorist attack in Nice as boats tied black ribbons in remembrance of the tragedy. And visitors got a chance to take a ride in the F1 H20 two-seater, getting a taste of the thrill and excitement of an F1 H20 boat. Let's take a look at what happened in round one in Dubai. Pole sitter Philip Schiap had a great start to the race, leading the field from the get-go. But Alex Carella was right on his tail, looking for a way past the French world champ. Torrente, who started in fifth, put in his usual tenacious performance, clawing his way up the field to push for the top three. A spectacular barrel roll in lap 27 by Jesper Fors brought a yellow flag. Carilla tried to push on Schiap at the restart, but Schiap held on. Torrente, however, managed to pass Jonas Anderson at the restart to move into third. Schiap in the end was just too good on the day, Corella runner-up, Torrente with a hard-earned podium in third, followed by Anderson in fourth, and a best-ever result for young Chinese driver and Xiap's teammate, Zhang Ziwei of CTIC China team. There are 20 drivers from 10 teams competing in Evian. The three men who took the podium in Dubai lead the world standings going into Evian and have dominated the sport for the last two years. Philip Schiap has experience and meticulous attention to detail to his credit. He has a team par excellence with a scientific approach pouring over data from countless practice sessions, methodically fine-tuning the whole boat package. At the moment, we analyze uh, all the situation on the boat and on the circuit to check if we can get uh, improve on some turn, if the top speed is enough, and uh, which type of uh, turn we have to take on uh, which condition. Philippe adapts the driving, uh, the style, and uh, to try to improve somewhere for the, for the race. Their engines are built by the legendary Alex Ledin, their props by Mr. Dynamite. This is a top-class outfit. But CTIC F1 China's former in-house boat guru, David Moore, has shifted allegiance and switched over to their fierce competitor, Victory Team. His move to Victory has meant a brand new, more-built Raptor for Sean Torrente. The same boat. <laughs> with 
which Shiap has won the last two world titles. That thing's awesome. It's, it's, it's awesome. You know, I've been doing this a long time and I've raced a lot of boats. That's the best balanced race boat I've ever had in my life. I mean, you come down here, you see stuff, you think the boat's gonna get out of shape, it just, it just keeps on trucking, man. It's, I'm excited, it's gonna be good. Torrente is a tenacious, aggressive, no-holds-barred kind of driver who's been known to reach the podium regardless of the condition of his gear. Now, with a Raptor under him, the master from Miami is a more serious threat than ever. Eric Stark of Emirates' team is no rookie anymore. He's a consistent threat for the podium in every race he enters, and he is well prepared, putting in the long hours to snatch success in Evian. Yeah, I was I was home testing and I built the same course home uh, in my backyard. So you know I've been doing like 600 laps on the course. So I feel really strong on this course and hope can, hope can do a good result. And then there's Alex Carella of Team Abu Dhabi, the three-time back-to-back world champion and world runner-up for the last two years. But he hasn't been in his DAC boat since Dubai, although he did win the Rouen 24-hour team class and has been racing in F2. Shiap's beaten him to the world title for the past two years, but if he can get past his lack of water time, he may be able to reclaim the dominance he once enjoyed. Yeah, just before the, last week we was in Poland for a one double six hour race. Now we are here without testing the boat, but you know, this morning with this rough condition, I like it. We find a quickly a good setup for today qualifying. and uh, let's see today. Ahmed Al Hamali is back racing for Emirates team alongside Eric Stark. Mike Shimura has a new Dragon Boat designed by Jonathan Jones in EMIC team. Other favorites, Moritz Stromoy, Tani Alkamzi, and Sami Celio are all eager to win after their no points showing in Dubai. Evian features a six pin, two kilometer circuit with tricky water conditions. So the conditions are uh, quite very difficult actually. It's, it's changing a lot. So one lap you have more or less good water, the other lap at the same point you, you're up in there. So it's really difficult. This course is, is really tricky. You know, it's a quite quick course and uh, really big waves always here. So it will be really challenging, but, but maybe I think it will be fun anyway. Rough weather and windy conditions the day before meant that the BRM qualifying would be run on the morning of race day. With conditions still choppy, the BRM qualifying would be reduced to a 20-minute Q1 round, after which the top 12 would race in the final Q2 session. In Q1, the field was down to 17 boats as Ivan Brigada, Jesper Force and Bartek Marsalek failed to start. Cédric de Guin and his fellow Frenchman Christophe Larigot were both more than five seconds off the pace. Meanwhile, Mike Sumura and Nader Benhendi tried to push for the top 12, but it wasn't their day, Shimura breaking down. Xiongzi Wei found some excellent pace, but the Chinese driver barrel rolled out of the running, although he managed to emerge unscathed. There was an epic struggle between two seasoned veterans, Francesco Cantando and Moritz Stromoy, the two going back and forth for that critical 12th spot. In the end, Moritz squeezed Cantando out in the closing seconds of the session, where Schiap was fastest, followed by Anderson, Torrente and Corella. In Q2, Sammy Celio, who had qualified from Q1 with a strong showing in sixth spot, was unable to start. His teammate Philip Roms also struggled at the back. Jonas Anderson didn't find the pace he had in Q1, settling for ninth behind Duarte Benevente and Moritz Stromoy. A duel unfolded between Eric Stark and Ahmed Al Hamali. Al Hamali had the pace, briefly moving up into third, but he broke down and finished in fifth ahead of Eric Stark in sixth, but behind Tani Al Kamzi in fourth. The main action of Q2 was a three-way oh. 
battle between Philip Schiap, Alex Carrella, and Sean Torrente. First, Torrente set the fastest lap time before pulling out and waiting for the other's results to come in. Sure enough, Schiap took provisional pole, which sent Torrente back out on the circuit. But both Schiap and Torrente were surpassed by Carrella, who broke the 45 second mark at 44.59 seconds. Torrente was back in third, but with minutes to the end of the session, he reclaimed the top spot by just two hundredths of a second for the time of 44.57. In a thrilling culmination to an action-packed session with just seconds to go and the yellow flag up after Al Hamili's breakdown, Alex Carella made a last gasp effort for pole, and he did it. Alex Carella won his 12th pole position with a fastest lap time of 44.13 just four tenths of a second ahead of Torrente, with Schiap finishing third. Crazy half an hour, I really enjoy it. I drive even ever my maximum, I give it all until the last lap. I'm, uh, I'm really happy, both is fantastic and wow. Um, he had us by about eight tenths and my radio man says, I don't know if we can do that. And I just got a really good, just a perfect lap and uh, nailed the yellow just perfect and beat him. And, um, and then they put the yellow out, and I was like, oh my god, we're gonna, it's going to end. We're, we're good. We only beat him by, like, I think, two one-thousandths or something. To his credit, his radio man had him perfect. When they raised the green flag, he was in a perfect position to take a clean lap with no one in front of him, and that was the difference. So uh, it's all right. We go to the race now, and we start second, which is, which is great. That's our best starting position uh, for victory team ever. Drivers enjoyed a lavish gala dinner, followed by a spectacular fireworks display that lit up the sky in celebration of Bastille Day. Thousands of spectators flocked to the shores of Lac Leman to watch the action unfold in the 20th Grand Prix of France. Conditions were sunny and waters relatively flat as teams and drivers completed their final preparations for the race. I'm feeling quite good actually, you know, the water, water is getting better and better and I think we will have a really fun race. We're going to be one and two today, so easy. <laughs> the race obviously will be long and hard and uh, I think a lot of people will try to go for it in the first lap and we'll see everything can happen. Let me see after the start what position we have and then attack. Of course if you have on the pole position easy to turn on the first boy but uh, normally I have a good setup for, for make a good start and quickly start and uh, I hope I'm first on the first turn. All eyes would be on local hero and two-time defending world champion Philip Schiap, but he has his work cut out for him if he's to pass Corella and Torrente, who'll be starting in first and second positions on the pontoon. The starting grid, Alkamzi in fourth, then teammates Al Hamili and Stark, fifth and sixth, Stromoy 7th, followed by Benevente, Anderson, Roms, Xiong, Celio way back in 17th, Shimura and Force at the very back. A final few seconds as teams await the lights. There away, the roar of engines as the field speeds down that opening straight away to the commitment boy. Carella and Torrente locking horns on the inside as Schiap tries to keep up. Benevente has a poor start as he's passed by Anderson and Roms. Torrente nudges ahead of Carella, but Carella has the inside advantage as they come around the commitment buoy. Carella in the lead. Just behind them, Jonas Anderson passes Moritz Stromoy and sets his sights on Eric Stark in sixth position. In the lead, Carella opens a slight gap, but Torrente in dogged pursuit. Eric Stark in sixth, trying to fend off Anderson on his starboard, but Anderson is too fast on the outside as he sets his sights on Ahmed al Hamali. 
Connolly in fifth. With a start lap completed, no change to the starting positions in the top four, but Anderson is shaking things up, trying to get into the top five. The Swedish four-time Grand Prix winner is moving up on Ahmed Al Hamali, trying to take him from the outside, but Al Hamali holds on. Out front, Alex Carella opens a three-second lead over Torrente in second, who also enjoys a three-second gap over Shiap, and Thani Al Kamzi in fourth for Team Abu Dhabi. Behind Al Kamzi, the battle for fifth position continues between Ahmed Al Hamali and Jonas Anderson. Anderson does it. The Swede moves into fifth on the yellow right-hander in lap three. But there's some big drama at the back too, as two-time world champion Sammy Celio climbs eight positions to move up to 10th, overhauling Duarte Benevente as his Baba team spurs him on. In the following lap, Eric Stark overtakes his Emirates teammate Al Hamali on the inside, Stark moving up into sixth, setting his sights on fellow Swede Anderson. Al Hamali's woes continue as he's then surpassed by Philip Roms of Baba Racing. Philip Roms passes him and speeds off. Great racing from the young Finn. In the lead, Carella still in charge, but Torrente has cut the gap down to 1.78 seconds as he breathes down Carella's neck. Torrente's victory teammate and class one legend Nader Ben Hendy almost gets some big air there as the number three boat is getting lapped by Alex Carella. And look at that, it's Cedric De Guin of Maverick Racing who comes out of the blue, up from 15th position to overtake Benevente and move into 11th on lap eight. But as the lead drivers lap the back markers, the circuit gets congested, and this could be a chance for Torrente to take Corella in the traffic. F1 Atlantic driver Benevente getting lapped there by Corella and Torrente. Torrente makes a push for the lead. He's neck and neck with Corella, nudging ahead of the Italian. Torrente does it. Sean Torrente snatches the lead from Alex Corella. Great racing from the man from Miami as Corella chases the blue boat, trying to reclaim the lead he lost. But it's just lap 12, and with 36 more laps to go, anything could happen. Torrente hits a pin on turn three. The boy has been taken out, which will be a yellow flag and possibly a drive-through penalty for Torrente. Jonas Anderson has moved his way up to fourth as he zeroes in on Philip Schiap and overtakes the Frenchman. The Team Sweden ace is up into third position. That's great racing from Anderson. Sure enough, it's a yellow flag as the race team attends to the buoy on turn three that Torrente took out. The boats motor around in race positions, awaiting the green flag, looking for an opportunity to get a jump on the boats in front. The restart, Anderson caught napping as Schiap zooms by, then Stark, then Philip Roms on the outside, followed by Celio, and Anderson suddenly bumped way back. Benevente also has a bad restart as his teammate Christophe Larigo overhauls the Portuguese racer to move up the field, as does Zhang Ziwei of CTIC F1 China team. Benevente bumped back by the young Chinese rider. Larigo continues his meteoric restart as he also overhauls Moritz Stromoy, and the French F1 Atlantic racer sets his sights on Al Hamali. And he does it. He moves past the Emirati, moving up from 13th position to 9th. Up in the lead, Torrente still holding off Corella, with Schiap breathing down Corella's neck in third. Philip Roms up in fourth position, and Eric Stark fifth. Sammy Celio sixth, with Cedric de Guin up in seventh, challenging Celio. And Torrente veers off to do his penalty lap pass through, bouncing through the rough waters. That bumps Torrente down to fifth as Alex Carella regains the lead. Schiap up in second, Roms in third, Stark fourth, and Anderson in sixth behind Torrente. That's a big blow to the American for taking out that buoy. De Guin is in seventh ahead of Celio in eighth, Larigo ninth, Al Hamali back in tenth with Stromoy and Benevente in eleventh and twelfth. Al Kamzi out with engine problems, as is Cantando. There's a surprise name in seventh, Cedric De Guin of Maverick Racing Team. Oh. 
fending Celio off in eighth. Jonas Anderson is out of the race. What a blow to the Swede. Meanwhile, Alex Curla has never looked more comfortable, opening a handy four-second gap with Philip Schiap behind him, the Italian three-time world champion looking for a win here. Celio is out. Yet another no points showing for the Finn. His chances for a third world title this year looking grim. And Philip Schiap is also out. That's two years in a row at Evian that the world champion breaks down to the disappointment of the French crowd. Bad luck, bad luck in France. Uh, my engine is, uh, I think, completely uh, destroyed. Celio's Baba Racing teammate Philip Roms is thriving. Moving up into second position after Schiap's exit, Roms on track for a best ever race result if he can hold on. Stark third, Torrente fourth, Deguin fifth, Larigo sixth. The field really getting shaken up here. And Cedric Deguin continues his incredible run as the Frenchman overhauls Eric Stark. But Eric Stark gets back in there and reclaims third spot as the two riders lock horns. Corella leads, but Torrente is on the warpath. He sets the fastest lap of the race, breaking the 50-second barrier, trying to claw his way back up. Sean Torrente going all out. Torrente passes De Guin as he sets his sights on Eric Stark on lap 33, but he has to get past Mike Shimura first, who's a lap down. Torrente moving close in on Stark, trying to find an opportunity to pounce on the Swedish former F2 legend. Torrente keeping up the unrelenting pressure as Stark almost loses control there, but manages to hold firm, hugging the inside line. But Torrente has the speed on the outside line. Torrente goes past Stark. Torrente buries the Emirates team driver behind to move up into third and sets his sights on Philip Brahms. This is incredibly determined racing from the American victory driver. Sure enough, Roms feels the pressure from Torrente. Roms trying to hold off the American. Can the young Finn take on that more built victory juggernaut? Torrente ducks and weaves, looking for a weakness, trying to find a gap. But Philip Roms is not giving away any opportunities to the American. Misery for Stark. The Swede pushed too hard. I think I was third or fourth, so maybe I think I was fourth. So really a flashback from Dubai. You know. Shit race. Meanwhile, the battle continues between Roms and Torrente. The blue boat trying desperately to catch the Baba boat in the last few laps, but Roms driving like he has 20 years experience behind him. De Guin is fourth, Larigo fifth, shoring up French hopes after Schiap's exit. Stromoy has moved up into sixth position. Roms almost makes contact with Bin Hendy, just keeping it together. Torrente closing in. The final lap, Carella has an 11 second lead and he is the winner. What a performance from the great Italian driver. But the real drama is the battle for second. Torrente putting in a last gasp effort to catch Roms. But Roms does it. Philip Roms runner up. Torrente makes do with third. That's a best ever result for Philip Roms. What a result for the young Finn. Alex Corella celebrates his 12th Grand Prix win. Great victory for Team Abu Dhabi. The final race results. Corella, Roms, Torrente on the podium. The French can celebrate a fourth and fifth place for De Guin and Larigo. Points for Nader Hendy in ninth and first ever points for Mike Shimura in 10th. You know, I felt like I let my team down today. We passed Alex for the lead about eight or 10 laps in and the boat was amazing. And uh, just take a big wave in the, in the corner and remove the pickle fork and send me into the buoy. So I had to do a drive through and come from, I don't know, way back. But um, I'm proud of my guys. They gave me a winning boat and uh, I didn't come through for them today. But luckily, Port of Mal is only two weeks away. So uh, we'll, we'll take it there and uh, the season's looking bright. <laughs> Uh, 
restart. I had a pretty good restart. I think I had at least three guys in the restart, and then, then Philippe broke his engine, and then it was just a driving. Wow, wow, I can say it's just something that you have always been dreaming of. Yeah, tough race, really tough race with Sean, especially the first lap. He gets me after I take a good step, I stay close to him because the condition was really rough. I was waiting if I could make something for catch him. I'm really happy for Team Abu Dhabi, for my mechanics that did a fantastic job. I'm really happy for this. That win places Carilla atop the world standings with 35 points. Torrente in second on 24 points, followed by Schiap on 20. Roms moving up to fourth with 17 points. Benevente, Anderson and De Guin tied in fifth position. That brings to a close the 20th Grand Prix of France. See you in Portimao, Portugal for round three of the UIM F1 H2O World Championship. Run, run, run.